Hi everyone, welcome to the Buffett and Beyond weekly ETF video letter and we're going over two ETFs. One is in the retail business and one is consumer staples and we want to see why they're lagging so much and even if we should be worried about these two ETFs. So in the meantime, if you want to live on this beach like Jimmy Buffett, you've got to learn how to invest even better than Warren Buffett. Okay, let's look at the XLP and the XRT and the XLP. P consumer staples and the XRT of the retail. Now the black line is the S&P 500 and this is year to date. So we can see the S&P is up about 16, 16 and a half percent while the XRT the retail, see that's how you remember that <laughs> retail XRT up about 10 percent and the XLP which is the consumer staples is up about zero and this is really the question for the week that People have, well, Ellie, for one, has written in and said, is it time to buy the XRT? But I want to show you a few things in here, folks. So let's get right to it. Now, over five years, we can see both of them. Black line, again, is the S&P 500. We could see both of these ETFs underperforming the S&P 500. So with the XLP, in other words, consumer staples, down about or I'm sorry, up about 40% while the S&P is up 60%. And the XRT, the retail is up about, oh, I would say about 30%. So both of them are lagging the S&P 500 by quite a bit when you consider, would you rather have, if you invested $100, would you rather have $140 or $160? But put some zeros on that and you can see these are quite different. Now, our theory, it's, uh, which is pretty much holding true over the long term if you pick the best stocks out of these ETFs we will outperform or we should outperform and we have been outperforming the ETF itself but the point I want to bring out is why not pick the better ETFs that have performed as well as the S&P 500 or better than the S&P 500, which we will see later on. Why not pick the best five stocks out of those rather than looking at ETFs that underperform under the long term and picking out the best five or six or seven stocks out of these ETFs and then barely outperforming the well outperforming the ETFs for sure but barely outperforming the S&P 500 so let's put all that together I know that was a mouthful and a lot to think about so here we have consumer staples up here and what do we have here eight stocks and we look at them and the consumer staples ETF is up only 2.7% while the S&P is up 16%. However, the, t the eight stocks out that we think will outperform have outperformed the ETF by a long shot. ETF is up 2.7% right up in here and these top eight stocks up 11.7%. So we can outperform the e ETF itself, but if the ETF underperforms the S&P over the long term, why even mess around with the ETF top stocks? Why go through all that work? Now let's go to the retail. The retail is up 8.5% while the S&P 500, now I took these on different days, up 15.9%, let's call it 16%, and the top five stocks up 18.8%. Now, of course, that is much contributed to by Amazon, which is up 63% this year. So we're looking at year to dates, but I didn't do them all on the same day. So yeah, we outperform the S&P 500 and we outperform the ETF, but we can do much better than that because don't forget, over five years, this XRT, the retail ETF, did not outperform the S&P 500. So let's go to the different ETFs that we've gone over recently. Now, the S&P 500 up about 16%, a little bit more than 16%. Our top 30 stock portfolio, which is mostly stocks picked from the S&P 500 index, 
are up as of July 31st, up 40.2%. Phenomenal year that we're having here, folks. Now, let's look at the consumer staples, up 2.7%. And as we showed in the last chart, but the top stocks are up 11.7%, still below the S&P 500, but not below our top 30 stocks. Now, how about the retail ETF, which we just went over, up 8.5%, the top stocks up eight, almost 19%, outperforming the S&P 500, yes, but the retail ETF is a tough ETF. It barely, it doesn't outperform over five years. Now, transport, which performs a little bit better, a little bit worse over the long term, but pretty close to the S&P 500. The top stocks, top five stocks as of the other day are up double that, 47%. So you can see as we get closer and closer to the S&P 500, which the transport hat does, we get better and better results out of the top stocks. So why even play around with the consumer staples? Why play around with retail? Well, we have the transport, which performs almost as well as the S&P 500. Then we get into some nifty areas, technology and the semiconductor. Well, let's do the technology first. Technology has way outperformed the S&P 500. We're going to see that in a minute. And the top stocks out of that technology group up 54.5%. Absolutely amazing. Semiconductor ETF outperforms them all, all of them folks, including the S&P 500. Top stocks as of about three weeks ago were up 84.7%. So you can see that the ETFs that do as well or better than the S&P 500 get better results out of their top stocks. So why not go to the best ETFs and invest in the top stocks in those ETFs? And we go over those every week, folks. So here we are over five years, and yeah... This is the semiconductor ETF. Again, black line is the S&P 500 semiconductor ETF, and then the technology ETF. And then if you're going to go after other ETFs, go around ones that are very close to the S&P 500. So in other words, the transports, which we mentioned already, Oil, this is oil down here. There's a 60% difference over five years between the S&P 500 and the oil ETF. And even though there's individual oil stocks that have been performing pretty well lately this year, but folks, over five years, it's not a, a great place to be in. The industrials are in this group, and the transports I mentioned are in this group. Materials are in this group, and we'll be going over those over the next couple of weeks. So, yeah, if you're going to invest, if you go and go to go through the work of even reading our letter or doing the work yourself from the computer program, you want to go over ETFs that are very, very close or beating the S&P 500. If you're going to invest your money, you might as well invest your money in the most efficiently performing ETFs over the long term. Now, some of you are saying, well, look at the volatility in the semiconductor. Look at the volatility in the technical ETFs. Well, folks, if you want to avoid volatility, you want to be in the best stocks, but that doesn't mean you have to put all your money in those stocks. You could put some of that money into cash and then you reduce the volatility of the overall portfolio. Because when we pick out the stocks using the clean surplus methodology, those are the most efficiently operated companies in the world. And we do go outside the United States only if those stocks are traded uh, under ADRs in the United States. But the point that we're bringing out is that we want the most efficiently operated companies. And that's what clean surplus return on equity tells us. So if you think these are volatile stocks in any one area, then you don't have to put all your money into that volatile area. You could put some of the money in cash, but you want to be in the most efficient 
companies. You want to be the ones that are getting the best return on the money you and I have put into that company. Now let's look at the XRT versus the S&P 500. S&P 500 is the black line and you can see the XRT which is the retail ETF has underperformed by a long shot. It's up a little over 20 percent while the S&P 500 is up about 55, 56 percent over five years. That's a big difference folks. You would have more than doubled your money had you put it in the S&P 500 over the retail ETF. So what the point that I'm bringing out is why even go into portfolios or ETFs that underperform over the long term when you can invest in the good stocks in the ETFs that are outperforming or at least performing as well as the S&P 500. And don't forget our 30 stock portfolio is up oh, oh, two and a half times the S&P 500. And most of those stocks come from the S&P 500. And there's an ETF S&P 500. And yes, we can perform out perform the S&P 500. Over the past 22 years, folks, outperforming the S&P 500 by two and a half times. So yeah, you could even pick the best stocks out of the S&P 500. So remember, folks, you want to invest in the best area. You want to best invest in the most efficient stocks in those particular most best performing ETFs out there. All right, folks, we had a, a little tough week this week. The market was down just a tad, but really we are in a bull market. Little by little, the market is just taking a rest in here. It's summertime. Nobody wants to watch the market. So go out, enjoy yourselves this weekend. Stay safe, and folks, we'll see you back here on Monday.